I'm Jordan. This is unedited. Welcome back. Um, we are on episode number two. Oh number my two. goodness! Wow. It makes it feel progress. yeah, it makes it feel a little more real when we're into our second one, and we're feeling extremely festive around here today yeah. with all of our Christmas decor and our Advent. And Ashley made uh, set up this beautiful tree right here. I love the tree. I know, and all the wooden ornaments on this tree her dad made, so it's even more special. And it's all your classic colors, Jordan yep. approved colors. Yeah. Yes, Red yes, because I can get particular about colors as we've learned. Yeah, so no blue, no Christmas. purple. You're safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I actually love the tree topper. I think that's fantastic. That oh, yes, of there. course. Yeah. Like, that just adds a little personality to it, makes it look a little human. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> So, uh, we're in Christmas uh, mode here. We got our Christmas mugs, yep. as was mentioned. Uh, one of the things that comes out every year at Christmas time are Christmas cups at places like Starbucks, Tim Hortons. You could probably find them at Second Cup as well and different coffee places. But um, this year, we both picked up a opposite mm -hmm. drink, and we're trying to figure out which one do you guys like better? Who, who, who did better this year? Do you think Starbucks did better with like or this? Or Tim's. Yeah, or Tim's. With like, Starbucks has like this purple kind of glitter and a little bit of snow. No, the thing Starbucks did well, that was really cool, which they're not using, the tag. is the tag, right? I and, like that. And it's like a gift, and you can write someone's name in there and give them a cup of cheer for 7 or $8. But it's a great cup of cheer, right? And uh, they'll enjoy it. What, 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 what do you find on the Tim's cup? Uh, so this one, because there are some varieties yeah. when you go, right? Like Starbucks has got a few, and Tim Hortons has a few. Like yeah. they're not all the same. But this one today, which I've never had before, is a reindeer with a heart nose. <laughs> yeah. It's so cute. And I wanted to know, though, if you were okay with the purple, because you said purple is not a Christmas color, and they've got purple on their cup. You know what? You're right. And I thought about this the day that this cup dropped, because I got to get excited about these things. I'm not going to lie to you. Lots when, of when, too. Whenever the red cups come out, I'm like, what are they going to look like this year, right? <laughs> and uh, no, I, I think the purple works on this thing. It's minimal. It, it, it works more as like wrap more than anything, like a bow, and uh, less like the main color. So Yeah, and it kind of looks glittery, actually. It is kind of. It's yeah. quite nice. Yeah. This one's definitely cuter. Yeah. But that one, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think. Yeah. Starbucks always does a good job. I think so too. The Tim's one is nice though. It's a little more minimal, mm -hmm. but it has like a cool uh Cool, cool little decal on there. And, and there's there's white cups too. I think Tim has as well. They kind of have the similar thing. Uh, which mm -hmm. ones do you like? Uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, are you a Tim's person? Are you a Star's person? What's your favorite Christmas drink? I know that there was outrage this year at Starbucks when uh, they announced that they were putting out Christmas drinks and there was no eggnog. No eggnog <laughs> oh, latte. Oh, you were saying that, right? So, <laughs> why? I don't know. Oh, I guess I get maybe it's supply issues. Maybe I have no idea why Could they be. did it. The eggnog latte and the gingerbread latte aren't available in the Canadian stores. And so um, I don't know. My favorite's the chestnut praline. So I'm happy that came back. There's a sugar oat cookie drink this year. That's what like you were telling commercial. me to try was the oat yeah. sugar cookie one. Yeah, it's good because you like the one in the fall. So I yeah. figured you'd probably be into that. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. Starbucks drinks are good. Um, Tim's drinks are good. I hope you're having I hope you're getting into the festivities of mm -hmm. the Christmas spirit maybe you have snow where you live we got some outside which might melt i don't know we'll see what happens yeah i'm hoping not i, do, I hope so too i like having yeah. the snow out there and if you're so. tuning in from the states we just wanted to say a happy belated i guess or yes, delayed absolutely. thanksgiving yeah. um because you just celebrated thanksgiving so happy thanksgiving to you yeah. and i hope our canadian friends have benefited from some of the black <laughs> friday sales that were happening on the weekend there's a bit yeah. of chaos and empty shelves but you yeah. know i hope you um, stay safe during Black Friday, yeah. it can get interesting sometimes. But uh, you, or you can just go online now, though. So I'm not yeah, sure. There's how Cyber Monday now too. So, yeah, so. yeah. Maybe you load it up there and just uh, avoided the lines and perhaps cold. Awesome. Season, yeah. So. Awesome. So this week we actually went out and about again. So we're going to show you where we went to getting into some more of the Christmas spirit. Today? Yeah, I'll get two of those uh, sugar cookie cookie oat lattes grande. Were they ice or hot? Uh, those will be hot. Okay, anything else? Yeah, and I'll have a decaf grande 
chestnut praline latte with lactate. Uh, no foam, but uh, we'll take the whipped cream. And can I get that extra hot too, please? Extra hot for anything else? No, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. So, how do you remember your orders? I just, it, it kind of rolls off the top. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's my drink in the winter. Christmas. Fair enough. No the boy without a toy. So giddy up, root of my dear. You actually making me break going five clicks. Settle down. Yeah. Settle down, Jordan. Hey, it's the Eiffel Tower. Look at this. The chickens. How does that go? Oh, three French heads. Oh, we're in five golden rings. Ten jumpers jumping. Lord's leaping. Oh, yeah, Lord's leaping. She's right. Oh, jumpers gosh. jumping. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new words from now on. I would like my lyrics considered, please. <laughs> Okay, what was with the deal at Starbucks? What? What did I do? Like your order. You're that <laughs> annoying person that I have to stand behind uh, and listen to. And I, then I actually feel sorry for the people behind the till too. You know, I am not that annoying person. Starbucks gives you the ability to customize your drink and I was simply exercising my freedom, okay? And okay. Uh, making my drink my own that day. You know, I think I held back a little bit actually because I knew we were recording this one. So, uh, <laughs> so um, you should give me some credit on this, but no, it, it was a good drink. Starbucks is always awesome. It's a nice thing to get before we went to the Enchanted Forest. Mm -hmm. and, I agree. Uh, what did you think of that? Loved it. So we found out, just because we were, you know, paying attention, that it's been there since 1999. Yeah. So this would be its 22nd year. Of course, they're always adding new things and, mm -hmm. you know, new displays. But I love it. I absolutely love lights. I think it's the thing I like about decorating my house at Christmas the most, too. Yeah. I just love yeah. lights in general. Me, too. Um, I love the the fire uh, fireworks that go off in the air because you okay. can see them from many points of the city, even. <laughs> yeah. Right? So I absolutely absolutely love that one and yeah. i love the 12 days of christmas oh yeah because That's as it. we go me and my kids we kind of sing it as we're going <laughs> along and you know the five golden rate that part's always yeah. like the loudest part in the good car impression. right good impression Do you remember? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> the five That's gold yeah. rings anyways yeah so uh, how about you what's your favorite i don't know i just so for me i agree with you 100% on christmas lights being my favorite thing about the season for decorations anyways in fact i think that's what makes like late january a little bit less like happy and festive is because the lights aren't everywhere right mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, but these lights in particular i love the polar bears i really like the hockey scene i like the the curling scene i thought the train was super cool train's cool but i think you know what above all and th this might sound like a little bit almost kind of lame i guess just from going to the enchanted forest but like honestly just plain colored lights on a tree mm -hmm. the way they decorate them look amazing well like, like that purple tree looked awesome that that, that purple yeah sorry, purple. sorry i know i know i know that kind of contradicts my christmas ah, thing purple. but the purple one especially stood out to me <laughs> and uh the red tree where it's just literally red lights you kind of get a picture of the moon like it, it's just a nice setting like There's whoever so decorates many. that stuff is doing a great job well so. there's just so many on those trees right so it's not just these you know it's just absolutely beautiful even as you're leaving there's like candy canes yeah. and candies and yeah. cookies as you're going through the archways it's just beautiful so yeah and it sticks around all the way till the new year so no, there's absolutely. lots of time to go and yeah. check it out so absolutely no and i agree um this year we actually we were, our original plan was hoping we were going to walk through it right yes uh, because they typically on the first day before the enchanted forest starts give you an opportunity to walk through it and do a mm -hmm. walk through but because of the pandemic and keeping ourselves safe and as we should yeah but uh, they, they definitely didn't they didn't do that this year so that that would be a neat experience because I've never actually done the walk through have you never done the walk but I can guarantee when we do eventually do the walk yeah. it'll be the coldest day of the year yeah probably because yeah. that usually <laughs> seems to be the case yeah that's happening to us lately yeah. it's so beautiful and then you want to do something outside and it's minus 21 wow. you know and that's weird right because even, even like the Santa Claus Day parade uh, it was like literally the one cold day the in a week. only 
only right? full day. <laughs> yeah. My poor daughters were just freezing out there. So too funny. So, anyways, yeah, you have to go check out the Enchanted Forest. Mm. Of course, all the proceeds, most of the proceeds, go to the Saskatoon Zoo. So that's mm. fantastic as well. So yeah, check it out. You'll love it. The lights are great. They'll put you in the holiday spirit, and uh, you'll enjoy some good time with family or friends or whoever you go. Well, Christmas is so close, but yet so far away. Yes. So the next four weeks on Unedited, we thought we would do some Christmas stuff. So we've decided to call this a few of our favorite things, yeah. although it is not a Christmas song. No, no, it isn't. It isn't. Which and I've we do know that. I found that out, actually. I told you. Sound that. of Music. Sound right? of Music. Yeah, good man. That's good where man. it came from. But the idea is there, though, because at Christmas time, um, there's traditions, right? There's things that we do every year. There's new things we try, and there's things that you look forward to. Yeah, so I agree. I think it's worth talking about and worth uh, worth sharing. Yeah. So if there's any traditions or activities that you guys like to do with your families, with your friends, whatever that looks like, feel free to comment at any time, though, as we would love to see them. Maybe they're ones that we should be doing that we're not doing. <laughs> but what are some of your favorite things at Christmas time? Traditions, uh, activities? There's a ton of them, actually. I, I know my wife, Nicole, used to always make us like a, a things to do calendar, almost like a Christmas kind of list, right? And it had little boxes with little events next to it. And I think one year we checked off all 25 or so. That would feel kind so of, good. Uh, traditions, right? <laughs> but Checking off the I don't boxes. know. For us, it's all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah. I look forward to the music. I look forward to movies. Like I have like a list of like 15 must watch movies every Christmas, right? Which we'll talk about and, next uh, week. Yeah, we're going to get into that. Yeah. Um, I, I, like, I like sipping hot apple cider. I only do it around that time of year. I eat butter tarts which i find um are, are for that time of year right yes. and i can't do it outside of it it's Butter funny tarts. like the, christmas just brings about this idea that there's certain things we do now and we don't do it at other times and then there's all the light shows and the trees and uh we're just uh yeah we're, we're, we're big into the christmas thing we like to get up so. yeah i love doing all the christmas <laughs> things as many as i can that's why i'm always excited when something new comes to town that has to do with christmas or yeah. lights or whatever yeah um for me i absolutely love our family dinners um absolutely. we have a lot a lot of people in our family, immediate family. All my siblings um, have at least, I think, four kids or more. <laughs> so there's lots of cousins running around and stuff like that. Big turkey dinner we do. Absolutely. Um, we have like cabbage rolls, pierogies, like stuffing, potatoes, the dessert, all of it, right? And it's just fantastic. I just love it. Um, and then one thing that I really loved as a child was um, advent calendars. Yeah, advent calendars. And I brought awesome. one today to show you an example of one in case you don't know yeah. but there's a little piece of chocolate in every single day <laughs> until Christmas it's the mm -hmm. only time my parents let me have chocolate yeah. in the morning before I went to school yeah right and they're just awesome and now there's like a million different ones you can get right like there's Lego ones for kids there's I saw one that me and Ashley has to uh, have to have because I was telling Jordan <laughs> it's a cheese advent calendar and so <laughs> and we say cheese is life which I do believe that and so <laughs> <laughs> and you get to have a different piece of cheese every single day. So there's all these different ones now, just counting down the time till Christmas. For so. sure. Yeah, I think the, the coolest one I ever had was a David's Tea calendar. Uh, a David's Tea, I think you can still order online. Uh, but they had a calendar with 25 different flavors of tea that you can try. It, it was actually tough to get through. I know it seems simple that, you know, just- but you're committed, like you have to do it every, every day, single day. Yeah, just to make sure you get that in. And then, you know, you gotta make sure you're not drinking too much caffeine, at least I do, and you know, at late at night or something, right? But it was it was, it was was a cool idea. And I just think these things kind of give life to it. Uh, me and Nick um, in, in past years have also done one where we just literally have like uh, an advent calendar with 25 different shelves. And, oh and, yeah. And then we, we make little days for each of us. So we each skip take a day and uh, we, we have like either little gifts or little things uh, to say, or just little Christmas ideas, That's right? awesome. special facts, stuff like that. There's things I learned that, you know, probably I wouldn't have learned had we not had that tradition. So that's fun. You guys are all in. I love it. Yeah. yeah and I saw you take your traditional picture. We did. Right. Yeah. At the uh, festival of the trees yeah. in front of that big tree. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's the Christmas for you guys when you have that family <laughs> photo in there. So that's yeah. nice too. We look forward to that for sure. Uh, presents are also a fun thing about Christmas. I'm just going to comment on this very mm -hmm. Quickly, but were you always a person who opened presents in the evening after midnight, or did you have to wait till Christmas morning? Or are you like one of those people who really had to suffer and wait for dinner time no. on Christmas? So we had to wait. We were never allowed to open one on Christmas Eve when okay. I was a child. Okay. Um, and uh, we got to open them first thing in the morning, but we always opened our stocking first. Like we got awesome stuff in our stocking. We used to love our stockings, all these little mini wrapped <laughs> presents, right? Yeah. And then, but first thing we got to do it. And my kids, I don't let them. <laughs> 
open any gifts on Christmas Eve, but usually my parents come over Christmas Eve, so okay. then they get their gift. So it kind of works out like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's something for them to look forward to. Did you get to open one? And you know what? We never did, but one year we just we begged my mom. I think we were about 13, 14 years old. No, younger than that, 11, 12 years old. And uh, I remember, so I wasn't begging for Christmas gifts probably when I was 14. But, <laughs> but you never know. I might have been too. I'm not going to say. You know, might have been. You know, everything's on the table, right? <laughs> but uh, I remember uh, bugging to do that, and we did that, and we opened them all the night before, and like I got my electric guitar, and I was out there oh, making sweet. all sorts of noise at one in the morning, right? Yeah. And uh, it was okay, but I think it took something away from the morning excitement, right? Like even at that age, you still look forward to it, and mm -hmm. uh, I still look forward to it t today. But I, I think I look forward more to my girls opening their gifts because because yeah. they're, they're like going crazy and like it's so cool to live through our children yeah. again, <laughs> right? Yeah, like yeah, you get to, to see experience it? it in that sense. So were you somebody who tried to figure out what your present was under the tree oh, all or the time. sneak around all the or... time? And I annoy my <laughs> wife to no ends on this, even to this day, because she it, she loves surprises, right? As where I'm like, here's my list, and uh, I would love the... it if you got me these things. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's borderline to the point where it's That's like, not good. Oh, where was that record, right? Like, <laughs> or I thought I thought I was so sure I was going to get that, right? And so, but 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 for her, she actually likes the element of surprise. I love so, that too. So when I go off schedule, right, and, and uh, or off the list in this case, and uh, <laughs> and just buy something um, in general, she it, it seems to be very meaningful. So I, I guess we're all different in that sense, right? That's awesome. So, <laughs> so with our traditions and our activities, I had mentioned this one Advent um, calendar, which many of you may that might what be what Advent means to you. But there is also another tradition for Advent that we want to talk about that the church or Christians usually celebrate. Um, and Advent, which you can see our wreath right in front of us here with our candles, which is awesome, um, literally means coming. Mm -hmm. So Advent means coming. It's a time of anticipation of yep. something that's about to happen. And so about four weeks before Christmas, we start counting it down with the candles. Yep. And so we've got um, five candles all together. We have three purple, one pink, and then the Christ candle in the center. And they represent uh, hope, love, joy, and peace. I think the joy candle is always the coolest one, right? Because I don't know, the pink's just neat. It's just cool that it's like different, it. right? Yeah. yeah. So today I want to read something for you. Um, out of scripture. It's out of Isaiah 9 um, about um, them waiting and what's yeah. about to come. So Isaiah 9 verse 6, it says, for a child is born to us and is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. So there's this announcement that Christmas is coming, that Jesus is coming, uh, but they waited hundreds of years for this to happen. Yeah, they did. Would you like to wait hundreds <laughs> of years for something to happen, like opening your presents? No, no, no. See, in waiting, I think it's just difficult for humans in general, right? I think it yeah. was uh, Thomas Earl Petty, the, the poet, who uh, wrote The Waiting is the Hardest Part in one of his songs. <laughs> and uh, I guess, yeah, we have to ask the question, are we people who like waiting? Is it something that comes natural to us or does waiting frustrate you? Does it get you angry? Does it get you upset? Um, picture yourself in a drive through line and it takes <laughs> longer than five minutes how are you feeling in that moment i don't um, like waiting i'm not gonna lie no <laughs> it right? doesn't come natural to us right um no. order a package online or something like that like I, I can sometimes and this is a bit embarrassing but turn into that person who like i get my tracking number and i'm like <laughs> and refreshing that it. thing like you know five times a day like oh it's in winnipeg now it's gonna be here soon right and uh i don't know waiting is just it's it, it, it can be difficult we think it's a kid thing but really i think it's it's for all people Mm -hmm. I think waiting waiting's tough. How many of you Black Friday this past week yeah. found yourself in lines? Uh, Did you sleep outside the, the electro <laughs> Yeah, like sleep outside in the electronic store, yeah. whatever those places. Best Buy. It's always Best Buy. It, it, it seems is. to have the big lineups. Yeah, but. yeah, and where something goes down, right? Um, but uh, even like, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever waited for Black Friday. I have waited for different events and stuff like that. I think the earliest I've ever gotten up is like six, though. Like, well, do you remember when concerts weren't online? Yes, yeah, so you had to buy tickets. Yeah. And we would sleep like, yeah. like we'd go there the night before to yeah. get your place because you'd get wristbands yeah. and everything. You yeah. wait and wait and wait and wait. Yeah. Like we had nothing better to do. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. No, no. Yeah. And, and that's such a change now with just buying everything online. Um, I know like my kids, for example, Zara is just always asking me like, you know, how many days till Christmas, right? How many days till my birthday? What about Joey's birthday? What about your birthday? She just likes celebrating, right? Yeah. I think she likes cake or something or just all the sweets <laughs> that presents. come with it. Yeah. And presents. But, but she's always asking about it. And I, I you know, we, we 
we could write this off to being a kid problem, but I think actually um, waiting is not something that uh, comes naturally to us. It's a, in, in some ways, a, a discipline we develop mm -hmm. <laughs> as we kind of go through life. Um, I, I, I uh, read a study uh, recently from the University of Massachusetts and um, of 6.7 million people, they did this study of people waiting for a video to load on a website. <laughs> and of 6.7 million people, most people were willing to wait two seconds for the video to load, right? And then two they start to they start to noticeably get a bit stressed out if the thing hadn't loaded yet. And after <laughs> five seconds in that study, 25% of people just quit. Just abandon the process. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> Wasn't important yeah, enough. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. Five seconds is over, right? And after 10 seconds, 50% of the users had left and abandoned and given up on the page loading. All that to say, waiting is not easy, and I think patience sometimes is difficult. Do you remember dial-up internet? Yes. Yeah. I know. And so like dial up internet now is like when my data plan reaches its limit and I go on like slow data yes. on my cell phone yeah. and I'm still getting access to stuff, but oh my so goodness, slow. does that feel painful? Right? And I have abandoned videos because of that. Like you're scrolling through something, <laughs> something looks cute. It's like, oh, it's just not worth it to yeah. wait for like the whole two or three seconds for it to load yeah. or buffer when they start to like, oh, no. uh, yeah. You know, no. And what does that say about us, right? Like, and, and I mean that like <laughs> Instant. honestly in like a reflective kind of way, right? Like we yep. just don't like waiting and we're in a culture that expects things quick, fast and easy. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's honestly played an effect in just how we, how we function. And uh, so, so waiting is like a lost art. I think we could say it like that. It's kind of a lost art in our Yeah, because we don't society. really have to wait for much anymore. That's, that's the thing, right? Yeah. And with Advent um, being a story of waiting for, for Jesus and the, the coming Messiah, I don't think we fully understand how people in the, the biblical times waited for Jesus or waited for the Messiah because we see this event on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Jesus had already come. He's already been made known in our lives. And we see it through probably the lens of how we were taught when we were younger or even just recently. Yeah. But in these days, like they waited and they were they were and, and, and they were longing for the time when um, Messiah would arrive, when Jesus would arrive. And uh, there was this guy in scripture named Simeon. And uh, I've heard he's made appearances around the, <laughs> the neighborhood around the neighborhood at times. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. But uh, Simeon was a, a gentleman in scripture in the book of Luke. Now, Luke's one of the writers of the gospel. He um, was a doctor and he gave us his account of scripture. And in Luke um, chapter two, we read this in verse 25. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. Um, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. So he was waiting for this Messiah. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Mm -hmm. so, so he was waiting for this to happen and moved by the Spirit. He went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother marveled about what was said about him. And so hmm. it, right there in scripture, we're seeing waiting. We're seeing Simeon just waiting patiently, wondering when he's going to see the Messiah. And uh, he had a little bit of an advantage, I'd say, because the Holy Spirit tipped him off saying, you're going to see it before you <laughs> die, right? But uh, yeah. You still got to wait though, There's right? that attitude. Of, absolutely. But then yeah. at the end of it, there was hope. Mm -hmm. And so like, yeah, what, what are some thoughts on hope? Well, we're going to start by lighting the candle today. Yeah. And we're going to talk about hope because it's the one, the purple one there that uh, represents hope. For there we go. Ooh, Advent. I it right awesome. On. Look at first go. Look yeah, at that. It work. I know sometimes these things can, can embarrass me a little bit. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so hope, um, which many of you know the word, I think we use the word actually probably too much. It's kind of like using love all the time too, but it's, yeah. I hope you have a good day. And you're saying things like that all the time, That's but good. it's, um, so I looked it up to see what the definition, not the biblical definition, but the definition was, and it says that it's a feeling of expectation or a desire for a certain thing to happen, to want something to come to be, to happen. Nice. 
So let's just say um, to describe the feeling of anticipating or anticipation is um, say you're waiting for something to happen, maybe a future that's better than the present. Maybe it's a gift under the tree that you know <laughs> that you you might get that giddiness, that excited feeling. Uh, some may be unsure. There are some people when they're waiting um, uh, can be unsure. But I think we all know what that exciting waiting for something in hopes for something to happen. And that's called hope. Um, hope is actually critical for human, um, for the human experience to be healthy, mm -hmm. which is, um, I don't think a lot of people think of it that way, but it's really important for us to have this feeling of hope. Now, biblical hope is based on a person. Yeah. It's based on Jesus, right? Uh, which is different than optimism because many people talk about, you know, just if the, the, you kind of look up for the best case scenario, like this is what's going to happen. And you look for the best possible circumstances, how that could play out, right? You, you're a positive person, right? You're, yeah. or, however you want to kind of put it. Biblical hope is not based on circumstances at all. Good distinction. Right? I so, like I mean, that. that's a big, because yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things I hope for, um, but might look a little different. So, um, so even when things aren't good, which could be for you right now for this Christmas, I'm not sure what everyone's Christmas looks like, but we know it's still not looking what our normal used to be like, yeah, that's but true. even when things aren't looking better, we choose hope anyways. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a choice to wait for God to bring about this future that he's promised. Right. Agreed. That's, that's a, cho a choice. Mm -hmm. So now we wait right? So we light the hope candle. We're on the first week before Christmas. We wait, counting down the days till Christmas, counting down the days till Jesus comes to earth with hope. With hope. So now what? Yes. Now what? We always want to give you something practical to take home on an edited mm -hmm. and just apply to your lives. I think we threw a couple of themes out there today. Uh, one of the things I'd encourage you to do is just try to take some time to slow down during this holiday season. Uh, there's so much rush going on. Uh, you go to the malls, they're filled. You can't get a parking spot. You go out somewhere, you're waiting a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone's just going quick. I find December, I don't know about you, but this month like flies. It's so like, fast. It's the quickest month of the year. And yet yeah. it's such a special time, I think. And uh, so take some time, just sit back and just- uh, Slow down. Just, yeah, take some time to even wait during the season. I think you'll find that it'll bring some clarity and uh, help you this see the season better for what it is. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about hope today, and I think one of the best things you can do is uh, maybe you want to experience this hope this Advent season, and maybe this is new to you, and uh, the scriptures are new to you, and Jesus is new to you, and if, you're, if, you're, if you need if you want any help with that or um, have any questions, inquiries about mm -hmm. that, I encourage you to email us or leave a comment in the comment section. And we'd love to talk to you about this hope. We'd love to uh, just, you know, explain it greater to you, answer your questions um, mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, maybe you know this hope. And uh, I just encourage you to, um, one of the best things we can do is share this hope with other people. Yes. And that can look different in all situations. I think that could look like making a phone call to someone who needs it, cheering yep. someone up. That could be just simply sharing about this hope that you've come to experience mm -hmm. so yeah just loving on people right taking mm -hmm. some time to invite somebody over for dinner um go help out at the food bank maybe make a donation uh the salvation army right they've got the kettles, kettles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can go and put some extra money in there just take some time to spread some hope spread some love so yeah Absolutely. So thanks for joining us this week. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue next week a few of our favorite things yep. on Unedited. And uh, this is really what the Advent season is about. We celebrate hope today. So thanks for mm -hmm. joining us. This is Unedited. <laughs>